Thank you for watching Hillcrest Cabinet channel. Today's video is brought to you by Finland, where the Nordic play on ice that is thinner than... Pretty thin, very thin. This fridge upper pullout was created by my patriotic Finnish business partner, Jani Blum. Before we get into building this, let's check out some highlights from Jan's YouTube channel. Okay, so if you're a Mosaic user, we'll have this link downloadable in our web store and you can go over there and purchase this at any time. We'll put the how to install this in Mosaic at the very end of the video, so hang tight. Next up, cutting montage. Today we'll be converting this thing into our spice pullout. Not sponsored. Aww. This jig does come included and you can just drop that in there and screw those in. It should work perfect. Five millimeter drill bit with a stop. If you're using a CNC machine, these will come pre-drilled. So we are using DTC slides here because, well, I'm cheap and they work just fine. I'm going to put a little bit of CA glue on the Euro screws here just for extra assurance. Okay, so let's look at the parts we have. We have a deep shelf. This would be center partition. This runs along the center of the pullout. We included a lot of partitions and shelves for each side. So there's a partition, partition, vertical partition for the uh, shallow side. Another one, vertical partition for the deeper side. This would be the front and back for the pull out, front and back. You got shelf holes or partitions. And then we have the top and bottom, which are also filled with holes for partitions and shelves. <laughs> Lastly, the drawer carriers. So this will be what you screw your drawer track onto and then ultimately screw into the pull-out. As you can see, it's marked with where it needs to be banded. Hey, Paines, what you doing? She's not having it today. <laughs> there is a lot of forces acting on this pullout, so you're going to want to make sure you put a liberal amount of glue on all the dados. Thank you to my wife for letting me film this in our house so we can get this pullout available for everybody. <laughs> so next we have the top and bottom. You may be wondering why all, all these openings are offset one way. The reasoning for that is because if you offset it even just slightly, all the parts become automatically unable to be assembled wrong. So I wanted it to be easy to assemble. So having it offset like that for one makes it impossible to assemble it wrong. 
And also it makes it nicer for use for the client because you have one deep side and one shallow side. So you can uh, put in there, you know, crock pots or large items. And then on the other side, you could put other lighter, smaller items similar to what you put in an upper cabinet. Once you get everything lined up, just screw it all together. So these holes are going to fasten with screws your carrier piece. Now, the carrier pieces are drilled through, which makes them reversible. So the only thing that's important here is that you line up the two front screws with the front of what you expect to be the front of the cabinet, uh, keeping in mind that the depths are different. So your client may want the deeper side facing the inside of the kitchen or the outside of the kitchen. So just keep that in mind. So you're gonna install some Euro screws in those little holes there. This face here would be the face that you install your fronts on. So I'm intentionally leaving the track off of one side. You'll see why in a sec. In order to align, the, it's easier to get one side in than both sides and then slide it out after. So next you're gonna to wanna to try to find some sort of a shim or something. I have these little tile spacers which come in handy and just something to wedge it up. Of course you can just hold it and get those top screws in, but just makes it a little bit easier. Some of you are gonna cringe about this, but hot glue makes an excellent temporary holder of a door when you gotta screw it on. So I just put a few little dots on there, pop it up, and then pop a bunch of screws in. So once you get to this point here, you're gonna use either shelf pins or Titus pins with the Titus 20 millimeter hardware to install the dividers. So if you're hanging on so far, we're into mosaic now. We, once you go to the web store and download this, you will get a text document, something like this. This guide will help you get this installed into Mosaic. Once you get it in Mosaic, you'll be able to see the quantities, you'll be able to edit the quantities of the different parts. You may not need all the shelves or the partitions, or you might just wanna let your client determine how to utilize them. 
and just cut them all. You can also edit your cost, your add-on. These are the operations that it's drilling in the actual cabinet. So that's about it. You shouldn't have to do much more than that. Get your SketchUp file brought into the product library as it shows in that text document. And that's about it. So thanks for watching this video. Head over to our web store if you'd like to purchase this. And thanks for watching. If you're eager to dive deeper into Mosaic, enhance your shop, or explore the possibilities with CNC routers and 3D printing, you're in the right place. Your feedback drives our content, so subscribe to stay updated with the latest tutorials and tips. Watch out for our next video.